So let's start by looking at the dichotomy or the stadium. This claims that the runner, a runner trying to cross a stadium, the runner can never cross the stadium because to do so he would have to touch an infinite series of points ordered in the sequence half, quarter, eighth, sixteenth and so on. Now it's unclear whether this series is regarded as occurring before or after the halfway point, i.e. are we being asked to imagine a runner who's already running but can't ever reach the end of the stadium or a runner who just can't get going. To make it really paradoxical, I, I prefer the notion that the runner is already running but can't ever reach the end because that's going to really bite that kind of paradox. So that's the problem. The runner is viewed as having to complete um, an infinite series of discrete separate tasks it is impossible to complete an infinite series of discrete tasks, so the runner cannot cross the stadium. Now the question of course is whether the action of crossing the stadium has been accurately articulated. The runner crosses a space which is potentially infinitely divisible, but is not actually so divided. He does not have to complete an infinite series of discrete tasks, but take a finite number of steps to traverse a finite distance even though in so doing, he is passing over an infinite number of points. So there's this crucial distinction between uh, divisibility and divided. The space is infinitely divisible, but not infinitely divided in actuality. A finite number of steps is going to get the runner to the other end of the stadium. And indeed, Aristotle, when he writes about this uh, paradox in the physics, he makes exactly this point. He says the key here is to make the distinction between infinitely divisible and infinitely divided. The dichotomy therefore might at one level seem solvable, but it still I think raises some really interesting questions. For instance, is the impossibility of completing an infinite series of discrete tasks, is that impossibility logical? or, quote, only, unquote, physical. So there are still things, I think, that we can discuss and debate about this paradox. Now, we have a similar scenario with the second paradox, Achilles and the tortoise, uh, though here we are looking at relative motion. So this paradox states that the fastest runner in the world, Achilles, cannot overtake the very slow tortoise if the tortoise has a head start. Because, the paradox says, by the time Achilles has reached the tortoise's original starting point, the tortoise will have moved on a tiny bit to a new point. And by the time Achilles has reached the second point, the tortoise will have moved on a fraction again, and so on ad infinitum. And so once again, we're given this sort of notion that Achilles has to complete uh, an infinite series of discrete separate tasks in order to overtake the tortoise and that just can't be done. But once more, though it is perfectly possible to view the distance that Achilles has to travel as infinitely divisible, it is not actually so divided. Achilles doesn't actually have to complete an infinite series of discrete separate tasks to overtake the tortoise. He has to complete a finite number of steps. So again, we have this notion that time and space can be infinitely divisible, but that doesn't mean they have to be uh, infinitely divided in practice. One can just take a finite number of steps to reach one's goal.